story. When Christ was already at the cross, he was also a man. Amen? Not only was he God, but he was also a man. So there come a point where he looked at his pain. He said, God, I can't take this. God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? We all know that part. So I continued reading. And the Bible says that after he said that, a man ran up to him and gave him a bitter vinegar, I believe. Right after he said that. So I said, oh. And he began to mock him even more. They said, oh, maybe he's calling on the God of Elijah. Oh, wait. He saved people, but he can't save himself. But God was crying. Christ was crying. He said, God, why have you forsaken me? And then I come to think about it. I said, man, our pity party, that's not with God. Hallelujah. Even Christ himself, whenever he cried out, he said, Lord, why have you forsaken me? What happened? Mockery even happened even more. God allowed for, Trump, for him to be pressed even more. But if you go on to read, I'm going to give you verses at the very end. But if you go on to read, in verse 50, I believe, and it's John 12, in verse 50, the Bible says that Christ said, God, not, not my will, but yours be done. And I'm going to read that verse because that's very important. It's John 12, 23 to 36. Foundation. 
that even the hardest thing declared unto her, I'm going to break it. Hallelujah. Why? Because I gave up my spirit. And then the third thing is the Bible says that the tombs were open. The tombs were open. But pay attention. The tombs were open, but only the saints resurrected. The tombs were open, but only the saints came to life. So you surrendering to your spirits. You surrendering to the Holy Spirit. You're surrendering to God. You're not moving people who already who don't know Christ, but you're moving the church. That you're bringing things into life. You see, sometimes we pay a lot of attention to people who don't know God. But we forget that sometimes the saints are also sleeping. So you surrender into the Holy Spirit. What are you doing? You're waking up. You're bringing a revival in the house of God. Hallelujah. But I love when it continues. It says the tombs were open. The saints came to life. But it stopped there. It didn't continue. And then it talked about Christ resurrecting. It talked about Christ resurrecting. And then it says, after Christ resurrected, then those saints went on to preach or to give their testimony. It didn't say the saints came to life and then they gave their testimony. No, it says the saints came to life, period. Christ resurrected and was introduced to the people. Then their testimony came. What does that mean? Christ first, then you. See, sometimes we can be changed. We're so eager to go and just start speaking. We want to speak about God. We want to, we want to preach. Oh, I want to become a preacher. But you're not even representing Christ. Let Christ be re resurrected in your life first. Before you can speak. See, Christ brings validity to your testimony. I can speak about my life all, all I want. But it's just going to impress people. It's not going to bring change. All it's going to do is going to say, hmm, wow. She came from a long way. But if I represent Christ first, if I present Christ first, then I come after him. He brings that value into my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But that came only, only when Christ surrendered. And that was done where? In Calvary. See, in Calvary, beautiful things happen. But the only thing that we see is those insults. In Calvary, beautiful things happen. We, even, we don't even know that above him, it already proclaimed who he was. <laughs> While he was being crucified, they were always speaking of his name. Oh, that girl that prays too much. The one that thinks she's holier than thou. You're speaking on my behalf. You're actually testifying for me. Or the one that thinks that she can preach good. But all we pay attention to is that, oh, they're talking about me. But what are they saying? What are they saying? The one that thinks that she's too beautiful. You're crucifying me. But you're speaking on my behalf. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's all we see in Calvary. But we, we forget to look at the other things. See, whenever God gives me a word, he never gives me, I don't know. He never gives me something that speaks about, oh, your, especially, he never speaks to me especially. And tells me, oh, I'm going to bless you like this. No, no, no. He always wakes me up with something. And I bless God for that because whenever he speaks to me in this manner, it makes me look at him in a different way. Because, you know, whenever you develop your character first with God, you can do mighty things. So the thing with Calvary that we don't like or we, that we don't understand is that Calvary produces fruits. We are so content with the gifts of God. Yes, you can speak in tongue and what? You're so content with the gifts. What is a gift? What is a gift? Something freely given unto you. God's grace said, you know what, I'm going to give, I'm going to bless her with this gift. I'm going to give her this. But whenever you go through Calvary, there's something that happens in you. Or can you be a person when you sit there, you're being insulted and you don't respond? Can you be somebody where you, and not only are you being insulted, but you're being insulted for something that you did not do. You're being accused for the good of others. You pray for people, but those same people are talking about you. You fast for people, but the same people are talking about you. They're slandering your name all over the place, but you cannot respond. Why? Because you're at Calvary. Those same people are telling you, you are no good. But you sit still and you say, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. But God, let me ask you a favor. Can you take this cup from me? Can you please take this pain from me? Lord, I've been looking for children for a long time. And they're making fun of me. Can you take it from me? Lord, I've been looking for, for an employment. 
They were making fun of me, Lord. Can you take it from me? And we're like, God, why is it that you're allowing me to go through this? You're paying attention, too much attention, to the things that you're going through and not understanding that the season that you're in. See, Christ was insulted, mocked, and crucified. Where? Only in Calvary. Do we read about him being crucified inside Jerusalem? No, it was outside. Do we read about him being crucified anywhere else? No, only in Calvary. Why is that important? Because for most of us, we must understand the seasons in our lives. Every day you're facing something. And every day you're crying. One day you, you, you lose a job. The next day you lose a, a, a spouse. I don't know. Something happens. But because you're so focused on, Lord, this is too heavy. You're forgetting that man, this may be a season where God is about to do great things. Christ, before he went through Calvary, he said the time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I'm about to be crucified. But it's not crucifixion, really. It's glorification. Because the story doesn't end there. See, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to allow for my flesh to die. For there to be a resurrection. We love to speak about it, but where is resurrection? It's raising from the dead. But how can you have resurrection if you're still alive? What is going to resurrect? What is going to resurrect? Uh, we don't like the time that we go through. I don't like it either. But if you just take time to discern what God is doing in your life, you will appreciate it even more. That that character of yours that you've been working for for a long time, that God is actually allowing for you to be broken. But only in Calvary. Only in Calvary. Sometimes we miss our seasons. You were in Calvary all this time, but you missed it. Why? Because you focused on the pain. You wanted to respond to those people. But God said, you know what? I'm not going to let you speak anymore. Cry out again. I'm going to put a sponge in your mouth to, be, to let you be quiet for a moment. And I'm going to let you go through more pain. I'm going to let you go through more things. But the moment that you say, Lord, have your way. I'm done. I surrender. Now I say, Lord, have your way. Let your will be done. Sometimes we forget why we were created. Sometimes we forget what is your purpose. A Christian 